Cool. Um, yeah, well, I know we've got a lot to cover, so I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, I'll kick things off with just a quick round of intros. My name is Andrew, and I'm a product marketing manager at Nihilus, where I lead our customer marketing programs and our go-to-market initiatives for our email and calendar products. Today, I'm joined by Antoine Tarosian, a product manager at Nihilus, and also our calendaring and scheduling uh, product expert. How are you doing today, Antoine? I'm doing great. I'm excited to present uh, and talk about this new scheduler we're launching. Awesome. Love to hear it. Um, and thanks again, everyone, for sharing your time with us today. So before we begin, I uh, wanted to quickly run through some housekeeping. First, if you're having some trouble seeing or hearing us, feel free to message us in the Zoom chat and we can help you sort it out. Second, we will be recording this session. If you'd like access to it afterwards, uh, we'll be sure to send you the link. And finally, if you have questions at any point during our session, feel free to send those in the Zoom chat. We'll be saving some time at the end to answer them. Great, so here's what we have on the agenda. Uh, we know folks on the call here have different levels of familiarity with the Nihilus scheduler. So we're gonna start by introducing our scheduler product. Then Antoine is gonna dive a little bit deeper into the recent improvements we've made to the product and our APIs. And then after that, I'll share a quick tour of our scheduler. And finally, we'll wrap it all up with a live Q&A. But first, we have a quick poll question for you guys. Uh, you should see the prompt pop up on your screen here momentarily. Um, but we want to know, are you currently using Nihilus um, or for email calendar contacts integrations? Um, and we'll give you just a second here to answer this one. It should pop up now. All right, looks like we've got some responses in. Great, and it looks like it's a good mix of uh, both current customers as well as prospective customers on the call. Um, and that's really great to know. We'll be sure to tailor our content uh, today accordingly. Great, so starting off with our new Nihilus scheduler, um, over the last few months, the Nihilus team has been hard at work to deliver a front-end scheduling experience with far greater customization. And we've redesigned this experience to improve in three areas, which I'm going to cover in more detail in just a few slides. But before we talk about Nihilus, let's take a quick look at the state of scheduling today. Now more than ever, workers are wasting considerable time manually scheduling meetings, and coordinating availability between multiple participants. And in some meeting intensive professions, workers are spending a full day every week scheduling meetings on average. At the same time, third party plug and play calendar applications are on the rise. And while these tools are a great way to save time when scheduling between different parties, uh, they also force users to leave your application to find time. And in turn, these tools can negatively impact in-app engagement, and they really leave blind spots around booking trends and data that you can't capture inside your application, which is where scheduling APIs come in. These platforms allow developers to quickly integrate data from major calendar providers, including Google and Microsoft, so that product and engineering teams can stand up robust scheduling capabilities that their users love but not all scheduling APIs are created equal. It's critical to not just provide calendar connectivity, but also to give devs full control to design unique scheduling flows and user experiences. At Nihilus, this has always been our North Star, um, but lately we've been busy collecting feedback from developers and end users to really define that future of scheduling. Uh, Antoine, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So gotten a lot of feedback from the industry, whether that was from our own customers or our you know, competitive research. Um, and looking at what developers want and looking at what scheduling page owners want, this is a brief summary of the things that we've observed over the years. So 
Well, the first thing is componentized front end elements for developers. If you're gonna put something in your front end, it has to be done right, it has to be done with all the capabilities that comes with componentization. Uh, intricate integrations through either browser events or styling of those components or those front end elements is super important because it allows you to integrate it as well as you possibly can with your app or your website. Flexible booking flows is another big thing we heard. Uh, basically, business logic being able to be injected into the different steps of the scheduling process, whether it's when there's an intake form needed or at the end when you want to manually confirm a booking. Um, an example here is payment forms as well. Uh, and webhook notifications, because this actually allows you to build automated workflows off of bookings, cancellations, things like that. Scheduling page owners, on the other hand, which we'd more commonly know as the end user of most apps would be, uh, they'd be looking for things like customizing emails that they send to their guests, automating conferencing. So instead of having to manually add a conferencing link every time something's scheduled, having it auto-populated on all sorts of providers from Zoom to Teams to Meets, reminders. So reminding their invitees X time before an event that the event's going to happen, ability to control a guest's reschedule or cancellation permissions, uh, and, and manual conf confirmations, because sometimes you don't want to accept every booking request that comes your way. On to you, Andrew. Awesome. Thank you, Antoine. So now you've heard a little bit about these trends in calendar management. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the new Nihilus scheduler. So we built our scheduler on the latest API v3 architecture to take advantage of the recent platform-wide improvements we've made to developer experience, performance, reliability, and security. But that's not all. Um, to sum it up, our new scheduler offers a native scheduling interface built from modular components with fully customizable booking workflows. And what exactly do native, modular, and customizable mean? I'm gonna break it down. So first it's native. With our new web components, you can actually adjust the CSS to style the user interface in a way that reflects the design of your application. That makes the scheduling experience more seamless and it reduces any friction for your end users. Second, it's modular. Both the schedule editor and the scheduling page are now web components, meaning you can combine and interchange different parts of the scheduling experience. Breaking that down in layman's terms, this allows you to use only what you need from your interface and nothing of what you don't. Finally, it's customizable with what we call configurable pre and post booking workflows. Now we go beyond the existing customization that was available in our scheduler, such as picking availability types, adding custom fields, and we actually allow you to make custom additions or changes to the booking flow. We're gonna share some more concrete examples of this later in the presentation. So diving into these pillars in more detail, uh, let's talk a little bit more about native. With the new Nihilus scheduler, you can now embed front end components without using iframes using your own custom domain. Alternatively, you can use the Nihilus hosted components for minimal setup and basic scheduling needs. Our out of the box components make it easier for developers to build custom scheduling experiences fast. Plus, all of our components can be rearranged or styled, again, using CSS. So here you see a few examples of the types of components you can combine and interchange in our scheduler. These include options for custom and hosted authentication, scheduling pages that your attendees see, standalone components of the schedule editor, new video conferencing integrations with Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, and Zoom. Plus, we now offer support for locale switch for seven different languages. Uh, these languages include English, French, Spanish, German, Swedish, simplified Chinese, and Japanese. And now Antoine is gonna share a little bit more detail into our new customizable components. I'll let you take it away, Antoine. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, I'm really impressed that you remembered all seven languages like that. Um, diving a little bit more into the modular design, one of the biggest things that we addressed uh, in terms of how we built our components was making it composable. And this is a huge benefit in the editor component we have, the one that your organizers use to set their scheduling page settings. So composability allows you to 
choose what subcomponents in the parent component are seen. And to summarize what that means, you can show what settings are exposed and pick and choose what you want to hide, what flows you want to go through, et cetera. On the right, we see how you can change the scheduling component with CSS parts. So we've exposed basically every subcomponent as a CSS part. So you can change it as you would a native HTML element um, or a React element or whatever it is you're using, whatever framework you want. Um, and that's just a little bit more info on the modular part of this design. Next slide, please, Andrew. So end-to-end -end customization. So the idea that we had behind this and how we built this out and designed it was to put gaps between different parts of the booking flow. So this is two-prong. The first prong is the front end. It's what the end user sees, what the invitee sees. So there's different steps. You pick a date, you pick a time, then you have to fill out your name and email in the booking form. And then finally you confirm the meeting and you get a thank you page. But different parts of this flow might have different requirements depending on who is implementing the scheduler. So maybe if all the invitees you're expecting come from your app already, you have their name and their email. So you could pre-populate that for those invitees. So instead, maybe you want to end the booking flow early. Our components allow you to do that. We also have webhooks, which we'll get into in a second, uh, and post-booking or pre-booking type of booking states that allow you to do things after the fact. So Andrew, if you could go to the next slide, please. So this is the front end side where you can actually override certain events that happen within the component and change either change the default logic or use the default logic and just add a little bit more. Things like uh, skipping certain phases, if you want to skip the booking form, this example here shows time slot confirmed. Uh, not to get too into the weeds, I know not everybody's super technical, but you could choose the event you want to override, you could choose uh, API the, the inner API calls of the component, what calls you want to make. So if you want to just book the time slot directly, if you want to fetch availability, you can do that. This is really, really useful for things like embedding analytics, changing UIs dynamically as you're going through the components, um, skipping booking flows, as I mentioned, everything like that. Next slide, please. We have a lot of booking webhooks now, uh, whereas in our previous version in V2, we did not have. We have booking created webhooks, booking pending webhooks, canceled and rescheduled webhooks, and soon we'll have reminder webhooks as well. And these can all easily be listened to by your service. Uh, and you can kind of build anything you want, whether it's payment flows and you want to wait for booking to come through to confirm a payment, or you have intake forms you want to do after the fact. It's super, super useful for those sorts of flows. Next slide, please. And Andrew, I think this is you. Yep. Uh, thanks so much for that overview, Antoine. And yeah, just really to cap off uh, this section and what Antoine was saying, um, all of these new changes are built on top of our revamped calendar API, um, which offers a single point of integration for all major calendar providers, allowing you to easily connect user calendars and build features that leverage all of our out-of-the-box availability logic, including uh, round-robin scheduling and collective events. And our API is, of course, built with enterprise-grade security and compliance and is used by customers like Talent Reef uh, to launch features twice as fast and streamline their end users' workflows, um, which in this case is hiring managers. Great. So we have just one more poll question for you. Um, it's going to pop up here in a second. Which of the following challenges have you faced building in-app scheduling? And I'm going to give you just a few seconds to answer this one. Give me just a second here to launch it. Sorry, folks, just popping it up now. Awesome. Okay, you should see it now. And just a side note that the uh, the chat was disabled when we first started this call. Should be active now. So if you have any questions, feel free to use that Q and A box, um, or just shoot us a message directly in the chat. Oh, 
awesome. Great, I'm gonna share the results now. So it looks like we're seeing uh, insufficient scheduling API features, um, lack of technical resources, and high cost to acquire scheduling API um, as some of the top answers. Um, these are all things that we hear a lot from our customers and Antoine's gonna give us a little bit of a deeper dive into our new scheduling capabilities um, and how they help you save time and uh, unlock additional features. I'll let you take it away, Antoine. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, let's dive into the APIs a little bit and I'll try to keep this not too technical, but give kind of an overview of the thought process behind making each of these sets of endpoints. So all of these are built on top of Nihilus API v3. It's our newest, our most performant API. It's already been battle tested. So it's really nice to be able to dog food our own uh, endpoints to build a robust set of APIs quickly here. Uh, the first set I want to talk about are sessions. So these are short-lived scope-limited tokens that can be fed to the scheduling component. They control access to scheduling pages. So without this secret, it's, it's essentially generated by your secret. Without this, um, you, you can't have any non-authorized users book on scheduling pages. And we'll dive into that a little bit more in a future slide. Uh, configurations. This is like the, the bread and butter of the scheduling page. All the settings are stored in configurations from buffer times to time in future allotments to availability, it's all stored there. Uh, these were previously known as pages for our former customers. Um, they control availability and booking options. Uh, and yeah, everything is kind of contained there. Bookings orchestrate tailored booking processes. They create bookings and pre-bookings depending on what mode you're using. Uh, they manage the scheduling and recancellation flows. And they can also be used to grab, you know, a history of everything that's been booked before. Availability, this allows really complex availability calculations such as collective or round robin. We have two different types of round robin configurations. Uh, if you, know, you have a set of a recruiting team or you have a sales team that wants to kind of rotate through the members that get booked with, uh, we have max availability as well as maximized fairness availability. Uh, and that's kind of it for the slide, Andrew. Uh, that's a quick overview of all four sets of endpoints. Diving a bit more into bookings. So this, as I mentioned, manages all booking related operations. The nice thing about this is previously, we didn't have this endpoint available. So you had to track bookings off of uh, webhooks, event webhooks. Now you don't need to, we have endpoints that can fetch all these bookings uh, and we will soon be delivering one that's a get all bookings with tons of filters. So you can filter by, you know, whether it's a rescheduled booking, a canceled booking, um, extremely useful for analysis and displaying it to your users. You can orchestrate custom booking flows. So this goes back to confirming pending bookings for things like payments or post booking operations. Uh, and it sets a stage for more complex features down the line as well. So we're really excited about what we'll be able to ship past this point. Next slide, please, Andrew. So there are two offerings that we have. We have obviously the components, which are super powerful you host both the scheduling page and the scheduling editor with those components. We also have an Anilus hosted offering where you host the editor, but we host the scheduling page to remove some of the complexities from your end. The thing with this is it's tough to generate a set of endpoints, especially configuration endpoints that kind of cater to both because there's some hard coded out of the box functionality for hosted, but we still want to give flexibility for those that are hosting their own components. A really good example of this is we have an appearance sub object in configurations, and that allows you to set the appearance of the scheduling page uh, for your organizers. So if they wanna change the color, they wanna change the logo, any of those things, they can do so there. So one of the things we did here is we opened up the object so that you could put any key value pair. So on the other side, if you're using our components, you can grab the key value pairs and inject it into whatever spot in your CSS you want. You can change labels. You can change the submit button text. You can change the color of a certain item on the scheduling page component. The floor is open for you. But for our hosted customers, we still wanted to give functionality without them having to do that. So we have a default page styles tab as well that has reserved keys in that object. So just kind of an idea of how we try to unify the endpoints there. Um, there's space for custom cancel, reschedule, and confirmation URL fields if you want uh, to host it yourself. Otherwise, those would be at book.analyst.com. Uh, and we have app unique slugs. So every application you make, 
you can have slugs, which are essentially aesthetic uh, plain English URL identifiers for scheduling pages that a lot of end users really appreciate and use because they're identifiable and easy to share. Um, and now those slugs are app unique. Next slide, please, Andrew. And finally, session. So I wanted to dive a little bit more into this. Um, previously, and not just for our, for our uh, product, but for most of the other scheduling products on the market, scheduling pages are open, right? You get somebody's slug or ID and you can book with them if you go to the hosted, hosted page, whether that's us or another competitor, or you can hit the APIs directly. This, that's to say it's not very secure. So the idea here was to make it as secure as possible. So sessions are something that your backend would generate. So they generate a session, they'd send it to the front end, and they would essentially authorize the scheduling component. So only you and your backend have the ability to authorize the scheduling component and let people book on it. This is really important if you have sensitive flows, things that maybe take payments or take sensitive information in. Uh, you want to make sure that only you and your app and your organization have access to opening up the scheduling page to the world. So that was the idea behind sessions. And next slide, Andrew, I think it might be back to you. Awesome, yeah. Um, so thank you so much for that that rundown, Antoine. Um, now we're just going to, before our Q&A, um, quickly show you a three minute product tour of the scheduler so that you can see it in action. Um, just give me a second here to share my screen. All right, so we'll be walking you through this tour of the Nihilus Scheduler, um, which is of course a scheduling solution that allows you to quickly embed these modular, customizable, and native components that Antoine and I have been talking about. Um, with the, the Scheduler, product and engineering teams can build custom calendar features that keep users engaged in their app. So uh, we covered this, but what is the Nihilus Scheduler? It's a front-end scheduling interface used by over 250,000 developers across different industries and app types. With it, you can build on our universal calendar API and stand up calendar management views, automated scheduling flows, and more. Now, the beauty of our scheduler is that your end users will see a native interface embedded in your app, giving hosts full control to manage events and attendees uh, an easy, intuitive booking experience. And the best part is that you can launch these features 10 times faster than building from scratch. Uh, we have a customer, Choicely, um, who powers casting for the world's largest TV production company using our scheduler. So just quickly overviewing how this works, the two core web components are the scheduling page, which captures attendee availability, while our schedule editor lets event hosts configure and manage those pages. Now, the editor can be deployed with modular subcomponents to surface different features and configuration options to your users. And developers can customize that end-to-end -end booking flow to incorporate custom-built steps, such as intake forms, payment pages, and surveys. Taking it even a step further, you can rearrange and style these components, embedding them natively without using an iframe. This will help you design a scheduling experience that reflects your brand. Now I'm gonna quickly walk through an example scheduling flow using a mock applicant tracking system or ATS for recruiters. Uh, we work with many ATS platforms and they tell us that a poor scheduling experience can cost their end users uh, up to a full day every week in manual work. So one way to save time is to customize the scheduling page to share availability for candidates to book multiple one-on-one -on -one meetings from the same interface directly on the hiring manager's calendar. Once they select a time, you can add custom pre-booking form to capture more details ahead of the interview. And after that, both the candidate and the hiring manager receive confirmation emails with those details from the form. So that was just one quick example uh, that you can build out with just a few lines of code. There's obviously so much more you can do to tailor the scheduling experience to your users and your use case. 
including configuring availability settings uh, for one-on-one -on -one collective and round robin meeting types. And that's the super quick tour. We've just shown you how to use our modular web components and customizable booking flows to design a native scheduling experience for your users. Um, you can of course test the solution today if you'd like in our dashboard. Um, and now we'll kick it back for Q&A. Awesome. So I'm going to leave this slide up, but we've made it to our Q&A portion uh, with just a little time to spare here. Um, again, if you'd like to try the Nihilus scheduler today, you can do so for free by visiting the link um, you see here or scanning that QR code. Um, I'm going to take a moment here just to look through all these questions. Um, you'll also see a poll pop up in a second, uh, just asking you for some general feedback on the session. Um, but the first question that I have here for you, Antoine, um, do I have to use the Nihilus' scheduler components or can I also host my own? Yeah, so I think uh, you can either use the components uh, and host those yourself, or you can use a Nihilus hosted solution where we handle this, the scheduling page for you and you would just put the editor embedded into anywhere you want in your app. Awesome. And we have another question that just came in. Is there a way we can schedule a series of meetings, meaning multiple meeting occurrences? Uh, so currently, um, any open hours you set will be recurring. If you want to get more granular with that, if you want to say every two weeks or you want to select dates, which I actually think, Chris, you asked a similar question. Uh, any plans to allow scheduling pages availability to pick from specific dates? The answer is yes, that's in the works right now. We're going to be shipping group meetings where you can pick a date, you can pick slots for that date uh, and only that date. And it'll allow you to control your scheduling page a lot better. So the answer to both of those, I think is yes, uh, Andrea. It's, it's yes, and I think you might be able to do that currently as well for your specific question. Awesome. Do you want me to just, I can just ring a few of these off. I see some popped in, Andrew. So uh, I see Gustavo asked other plans to add support for more languages. Um, currently, I don't. I can't off the top of your head tell you what languages we'll add support for, but what we did do is open up the component so that you can actually pass your own JSON structure in for whatever language you like. So if you're sending your own emails, that's a really good solution that you can actually do now to add more languages. Um, otherwise, yeah, off the top of my head, I, I'm not sure. If there's any languages that you had in mind, I'd love to hear what they are. Uh, let's see. With V3 being fairly new, is a better documentation? I see that question twice here. Um, yeah, so the documentation's uh, a work in progress, of course, we just launched. Um, I'm glad to hear that you appreciate the, the rest of our docs. And yeah, the goal is to get them on par, same level of uh, same standard of quality as the other API references. So I think in the weeks to come, you'll be pleasantly surprised with how they tighten up. Um, yeah. So there's a new schedule allow for mandatory fields as opposed to just in notes. Uh, yes, absolutely. You can set a field as required if you want in the booking form. Can we design email template details as per our brand? So there's a disable email setting that you can set and then you can shoot off your own emails off of our webhooks if you want, if you want fully custom emails to your specs. Otherwise in the editor, your organizers have a chance to change the body or add to the body, I should say, and um, change the title of the body. Can we read the meeting invite subject from Outlook? Um, I'm not sure what that means. So I'm gonna, Nishant, I'm gonna skip that one for now. Uh, can we get documentation for the Nihilus scheduler using HTML and vanilla JS? Uh, yeah, I think we have that. We have React and we have vanilla JS. If you're talking about just a simple CDN package import, we're currently working on that. Otherwise, you just download it locally. You could still use it uh, as vanilla HTML. It's a web component, which makes it super flexible. Um, we're at time, so I'll just do one or two more here. Um, can we hide the header and footer of the scheduler editor using HTML and vanilla JS? 
you can target the CSS part and you could set, for example, display to none. That's a really good way to do it. Um, but yes, any part that's exposed, which is the vast majority of them, and we're working to make sure that that's, that covers everything in the components, you can hide them and you can modify them like you want. And we will have label changing support. So you can change the names of the buttons on the editor soon. Uh, right now, we already have it for the scheduling component. So you could change the button names right now through the same JSON prop that we talked about for changing languages to whatever you like. And I think that's kind of what we have time for, right, Andrew? Yeah, yeah, we just uh, exceeded our allotted time. Um, but thank you so much, Antoine, for answering those questions. And thank you so much, everyone, for um, asking those questions. We love the, the engagement and, and the excitement around this new scheduler. Um, of course, if we didn't get a chance to answer your question or if anything else pops up, um, we'll be sure to reach out. Uh, but otherwise, I think we can go ahead and, and wrap things up. Um, thank you so much again, everyone, for, for attending today. Um, hope you guys have a great rest of your week and bye-bye. Bye, everyone.